five unique black sheep house painting hacks I use all the time. This first one is has come from my love of French onion dip and potato chips, which is my favorite little late night snack. And the container just turned out to be perfect for a quart size uh, container. I also found that like a Cool Whip container works well for a gallon. Uh, this one just works really well for the quart size. I think sour cream and things of that nature would work as well. First, you're going to just eat all the French onion dip, which is the best part. And then you're going to cut off the bottom. You'll cut through and then cut off the bottom. And then usually I just kind of cut off the part that has the nutrition facts. Who needs that anyway? <laughs> And that seems to be the perfect size. And then you're going to see here that it fits perfectly on the top of a quart size can. Just like so. They do sell these types of devices at Home Depot. There's like a red one that you can buy or whatnot. But who doesn't love to reuse? And, you know, it just works really great. The other thing you can do if you want is you could tape it on there just to kind of hold it secure. But I do find that for me, just quick and easy, stick it in there and then have my hands supporting and holding it like this works the best and it is just the quickest and easiest way for me to pour without any mess on the rim. This next hack is tinting your wood filler. And if you aren't familiar with this type of wood filler, then this will be a double hack in one for you. This is called Durham's Rock Hard Water Putty, and it is very affordable, like under $5, and you just mix it with water, and you have instant wood filler. Now, it does tend to dry up on you, very, uh, it can dry up on you kind of quickly, so I like to use an airtight jar, and that keeps it nice and fresh for me to be able to reuse and I just mix up the Durham's rock hard water putty like normal just adding the powder and then the water and then I will add in my paint to darken it up a bit and if you guys have been around this channel for a while you know I paint a lot of stuff black and having a darker wood filler is really helpful I will say you can buy tinted dark black wood filler pre-stained and all that stuff but it's not going to be anywhere near as affordable as this mixture and as a person running my business and trying to keep costs down this works great for me after i'm done using the tinted wood filler i will just take my little canning jar put the lid right back on and seal it tight. You could even add a little bit more water right before you close it up just to make sure things don't dry out on you. And then I love to label the top of these jars and you guys see me use jars a lot in my business and it just keeps me organized and I'm ready to go for my next time I need to use it. I've never seen anybody do this, but I can't imagine I'm the only painter that keeps a bucket of water next to their project. Basically, I just have this five gallon bucket, keep it next to my project, and then as I'm going along with my paint brushes and I'm done with each little step of the way that I'm doing, I'll just throw the paintbrush in the bucket of water, I'll throw my canister, whatever I'm using that I'm done with, and is going to need to be washed at the end of the day, I just throw it in there and that way I can just move on to my next project and I just wash everything at the end of the day. This other hack is pretty cool. It's using a ramen box. I saw a lady on here on, on YouTube do this with a water bottle box and it has like the plastic liner, but the water bottle box for me was too big when I tried that hack. So I was like, hmm, is that, do I have another box that has plastic around it? And sure enough, I have some Apocalypse Ramen. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We eat ramen all the time. <laughs> we shouldn't, I know, but it just works really great. So first thing you want to do is get the ramen out, and then you have this plastic line, basically plastic wrapped box to put your painting supplies in and use it during your project. And it's just the perfect little size for me for one individual project. I can kind of have a box per project that I'm working on and I don't have to go out and like try to, I mean, who am I kidding? All my supplies are all over the place anyway, but it does help me corral my supplies for each individual project until I'm done with the project. And I can just toss the box when I'm done or reuse it 
whatever I see fit. I love this other hack. I've never seen anybody do this. Is you take the paint key, put it on the side, tank, take your paint stirrer and put it on the side there too. And it's what's great is if the paint stir stick has paint on it, you can put it in the side and it doesn't really get on anything else and you can reuse it because you can just like pull it back out when it's dry and it doesn't get dirty and it doesn't, you know, get on anything else. I keep a jar in there for my hardware and it's just a really great little caddy for me. I hope you guys will like that hack because it's such a good one. Now, this next hack, I'm sure you've seen all over the internet people using a Kroger bag, and I've definitely done that, but I tried to come up with something really original and my own, you know, I like to do things my own way. So I also found that the Kroger bags a lot of times would have holes in them or they were like too slippery. And then this bread plastic just fit perfectly over top of my four inch roller pan. I haven't found the perfect six inch roller pan cover yet, but for four inches, man, there's nothing that's going to be a bread bag. And who isn't going through bread like crazy? All you have to do is put it on with the writing on the outside. You know, you don't want the writing touching your paint. It'll come off and then toss it when you're done. We've all been there, spilled a little bit of paint on the concrete where we were working. And I like to use alcohol. It's quick and easy to grab. And I just squirt it on there, let it sit, and then I'll go in with my scrub brush. If I find at this point it's not really budging, then you can add some acetone. Fingernail polish remover will do the trick for more dried on paint stains, but most times the alcohol does the trick and gets the stain um, out of my way and I just rinse it away with water afterwards. Rinsing is really key or using a washcloth to kind of dab and remove the paint as you loosen it up. You want to soak it up or rinse it away out of off the concrete and before you know it it'll be back to brand new. Now let's say you didn't use my bucket trick and you accidentally left your brush out and it dried overnight and it's rock hard the next morning. You want to use some alcohol again. The 91% is the best. Um, and you just pour it in a little glass jar and about a centimeter deep, you know, it's not too much alcohol in there. And then just saturate your brush, you know, kind of do the best you can and some of them will be more difficult than others. Leave it overnight. This is the next morning. And so this thing has been in here like over 12 hours. And then I'll take it and wash it with just some dish soap or whatever soap I have on hand in the bathroom. And nine times out of 10, this really does the trick. Like I said earlier with the spilling paint on concrete, if it doesn't do the trick, you can use acetone. Or if you get really desperate, you can use paint stripper. But I like to try alcohol first because it is the easiest to work with. And like I said, nine times out of ten, it does the trick for me. It's really great for artist paintbrushes as well. See? Like new. This next one, I won't even really call it a hack because I think so many people already use this, but it's called liquid sandpaper, if you don't know. And you can use this on your furniture pieces or any surface that you plan on painting, and it creates a chemical abrasion that is very similar to sanding, and it makes your paint adhere and stick that much better. So this is a great tool to have. I will say that it is a little stinky, so you wanna have a well-ventilated space. You wanna have gloves on and a mask when you're using this product, but it does work like a charm and it does really make the paint stick to your surface. Let me know if you guys want a part two because I have even more painting hacks since I paint all the time and I have done trial and error on pretty much everything. So let me know in the comments if you guys want a part two and I will get started on that. Thanks so much for all my loyal subscribers. You guys are so awesome and you really helped us get to where we are here on this channel, making me able to share this content and share information with the world. I'm so grateful for that. Grateful for each and every one of you guys. If you like this kind of content, you want to make sure and subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! <laughs>